coming up on this week's episode of Common Denominator. At Yeshiva, our whole goal was to, you know, get the stigma off, um, you know, people thinking Jews can't play basketball. And, you know, uh, we felt like we did that and we felt like we, we created something. This is Common Denominator, straight up conversations with Moshe Popak. Relying on critical thinking and open spirited debate, we invite you to find common ground on everyday issues and encourage you to be bold, to be optimistic, and to take action. To learn more, head to MoshePopak.com and we'd be so grateful if you'd like, share, and subscribe to the show. Now, here's your host, Moshe Popak. Hi, and welcome to the show. This week, a trailblazer in college athletics. Ryan Terrell averaged 27.1 points this past season for Yeshiva University, making him the leading scorer in college basketball across all divisions. In his college career, he helped Yeshiva win 50 consecutive games and led them to a number one ranking in the country in Division III. Now, Ryan hopes to become the first Orthodox Jewish player ever to play in the NBA. He's declared for the NBA draft in June, and we're thrilled to have him on the show. Hi, Ryan. Welcome to Common Denominator. I'm excited. I'm excited. So as a fellow alum, first of all, want to say tremendous congratulations. Here you are making the choice to take off senior year, right? Building towards uh, a possible NBA career. So. Where is your where is your mindset right now? Uh, my mindset right now is you know just just getting ready, getting prepared, and and um, training every day, and re- really trying to get into the best best shape of my life, and you know just trying to get better and and you know get ready to compete. What is that? Take us through a like a typical day at this point. I think was it draft is uh, is in June? Is that yeah? Is that... Draft is in June, um, but my typical day now. Uh, would be uh, wake up, um, you know, wrap to fill in uh, in in the morning, and then uh, head to my first workout at around eight a.m. till about nine forty. Um, then head home and rest for a little bit, get get some food in me, uh, and then have my second uh, workout at eleven forty uh, till two till around, no sorry not two. Till about one fifteen, and then head to my third workout at two to uh, two to four, which is a weight lift. So my first two workouts are basketball specific, and then my two to four is like a weight lift and and recovery. Amazing. So, come June, how does it actually? How does the actual process for for lay people listening? So what happens uh, in June? You you get to is there like an exhibition at that point in June? What actually happens at that point? Well, in June, that's, I mean, I don't actually know what happens in June, but I think that's just a draft, but, you know, leading up to it. Um, so next week I got the senior combine uh, coming up, which is called the Portsmouth Invitational. So we're going uh, to be competing in that um, next week, and that should be a lot of fun. Um, and then after that, it'll be working out for, for NBA teams, um, you know, and whoever wants, whoever wants to work me out. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to go to those facilities. And then after that is, um, either the NBA combine or the G league combine. So I'm hoping to get to either one of those. What made you make the choice, uh, to forego senior year and, um, yeah, it it felt like the right time. Uh, I felt like we did, uh, we, we've, we proved a lot. Uh, I, 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 Yeshiva, our whole goal was to, you know, get the stigma off, um, you know, people thinking Jews can't play basketball. And, you know, uh, we felt like we did that and we felt like we, we created something um, there. And at the end of the day, it just felt like the right time to go, um, you know, with with 22 NBA teams either uh, coming or watching games. Um, so it, it just felt like the right time to go. And and uh, I, I feel ready. Yeah, I think that that's the psychological part. Take us back to when you decided, you know, you can go to many Division One colleges, scholarships. And I know you've been asked this question probably many times, but what was going on in your mind when you made the decision to go to Yeshiva? Yeah, I mean, so when it came down to the decision, it was it was a tough one. 
Um, I actually verbally committed to Army um, or West Point. Um, but it, it, it came down to, you know, the fact that I went to Jewish schools my whole life. I grew up, uh, I went to high, Jewish high school. I kept kosher. Uh, I wrapped to fill in. I keep Shabbos. Was I really willing to sacrifice all that um, just to say I played Division One basketball? You know, and at the end of the day, I wasn't willing to do that. And with why you success as it was and with Coach Elliott recruiting me since my freshman year of high school and, and telling me, hey, we could do something special here. Um, I felt like that was the right decision. And um, have, having made that decision and, you know, fast forward four years, uh, I felt like I made the right decision. It seems also uh, that your teammates from the games that I watched, your teammates were also uh, pretty uh, pretty strong. On the, on oh, the yeah. No, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, everybody ca- kind of bought into, hey, we could do something special at Yeshiva and, you know, really change the, the perspective of the world on, on Jewish basketball and Jewish athletes in general. Uh, and, you know, uh, and everybody bought into that and everybody wanted to do that. So, uh, and, and I felt like we did that and we're going to hopefully continue to do that. And, uh, yeah. Have, have you had to deal with some uh, anti-Semitic uh, situations? Yeah. No, absolutely. Uh, in high school, there was there was a few scenarios where uh, fans would say stuff and, you know, uh, that weren't too pleasant. And uh, a couple scenarios in college um, where, where fans and players would, would say some remarks that were um, definitely anti-Semitic. But um, at the end of the day, I, I kind of like to combat that with just beating them on the court and walking out just like we came in. Yeah, I love that. I want to give... Um... You know, uh, we have an array of listeners, so I want to express about Shabbat because that sure. is, you know, Friday night, come Friday night, there's no use of electronics, no use of uh, cars, and uh, from Friday night sundown till Saturday night when the three stars come out, and sure. typical NBA games, right, are, yeah. uh, are played on Friday night or even Saturday during yeah. the day. What's um, first of all for you? What's going to be your um, procedure sure. handling that? Um, yeah, yeah, it's a great question. Um, the, the game plan would be to you know stay by a hotel close to the gym and uh, walk to the gym on job. It's not use any electronics and just walk to the gym. Uh, I've talked to rabbis about it um, and they they've approved of that and said it was okay. So uh, that'll be the game plan. And, and as far as as far as you uh, wanting to be a part of that, you know, I know you wear also the skull cap called the yarmulke. So I mean, obviously that takes that takes courage. What's going on inside of you um, that you know? If you look back at your life, you know, you look in ten years, twenty years from now, uh, why is that? What drives you in that way to be kind of a role model? Yeah. No. One hundred percent. When I was in high school, I didn't always want to wear it um, in AAU and, you know, going to play pickup, I didn't always wear it. But then it, it took me uh, a few years and years to get older to realize the importance of, of wearing it and, you know, showing that, you know, don't be afraid of who you are, you know, be prideful of who you are and, you know, sh- you know lead by example and, and show people, you know, you know, at least just lead by example and show people that it doesn't matter, you know, what you believe in or where you come from. You're, you're still a person and you, you can still achieve whatever goal you want, you know, wearing your yarmulke or believing in whatever you believe in. It seems to me that, that your, I guess your spirituality is what kind of guides you. I guess you're, you're pointing North as they say. Um, yeah. And, and as long as you're doing the right thing, it doesn't for you and your relationship with God, that's that's what um, kind of overtakes anything else in a way. That's your, yeah, absolutely. That's your top absolutely. priority. I want to go back to your to your years at Yeshiva. Do you have any favorite games that were just your favorite memories? That looking back yeah. at the time. No, absolutely. I mean, any conference playoff game or championship, those were awesome. You know, the atmosphere was insane. Uh, there's nothing like playing a game in the MSAC. Um, you know, the, the, 
the fan base is insane and you get the whole community out. Um, but winning those two first two tournament games my sophomore year was definitely the highlight. Um, you know, their COVID canceled the games, I uh, canceled the, the fans. So there was no fans in the gym, but that was, you know, some of the best ball I've ever played with team wise, you know, the, our team was just firing on all cylinders and we were playing for each other. And, um, it was just a lot of fun to play in that atmosphere and, 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 you know, win those two tournament games, which Yeshiva never won, uh, tournament games up to that point. What would you say from your, uh, from your experience, what is your key takeaways now going into the draft as far as as far as life lessons? There's two things that I that I've lived by up until now, um, which is half the success is just showing up. You know, if you if you have a tryout, if you have a workout, if you schedule something, you, sh- you always show up to it. And uh, the other half is what you do when no one's watching, when, you know, it's easy to you know get hype for a game when, you know, there's a thousand people in the gym cheering you on and, you know, and the game is all hyped up, but, you know, you got to bring that same energy um, when, when no one's in the gym and it's just you and a basketball and a hoop. Um, So it, it, so those are the two things I kind of lived by uh, up until now Um, in, in terms of like getting recruiting or choosing the right school or going, choosing the right path. I would say, you know, go where you think you can succeed the best. Um, and, and go where you think the, the, the plan, you know, where, where you wanted most, because at the end of the day, if you're, if you perform and you do well, people will show up, teams will show up. You know, I, you know, I, I we played division three basketball. We had a bunch of pro teams at our, at our games. So, um, just go where, where you think you can succeed the best. You know, it's funny. I hear from always from great leaders, uh, exactly that. Meaning if you just show up. If you show up in something that you believe in your heart, uh, the people will follow. The people will come as long as you're congruent. So, I admire that. Uh, whenever, whenever I see that leadership, so that's really. Tell me about uh, you know I I know speaking to a lot of different athletes and people that perform on the highest levels, there's a tremendous component about the mind work, psycho- the psychology of things. Yeah. Do you have a practice when it comes to the to the mind do you have a coach mind coach uh, um i don't have a specific mind coach i just think that you know all the hours that i've put in um you know I, you know when the when the lights weren't on when the you know behind you know when when nobody was watching all those hours kind of helped me with my confidence and and feeling like hey i put the work in i'm ready to go you know knowing that i put in all the work before the moment mm-hmm. uh prepares me for the moment yeah. And I know, tell me about your relationship with your father. Yeah, no, we're, I mean, we're super close. We talk every day, um, you know, and, um, you know, he, he definitely grew up uh, a role model for me and a, and a hero for me. He, he played division one basketball and baseball mm-hmm. um, at UC Santa Barbara. Um, and he, he's been to pretty much every one of my games since first grade, mm-hmm. him and my mom. Uh, have been to all every single, pretty much every single one. Uh, they may have missed a couple of AAU games here or there, but you know, they've been to every single one, and you know, have been my number one fans and and bit, biggest critiques at the same time. You know, trying to coach me uh, along the way, and so it's tough love we call it. Right? Tough love, yeah, yeah. exactly. So right. I, I'm super grateful for for both my parents yeah, in that aspect and my whole family in that regards. Yeah, no, I love that. I always see. Um, I always love that great story, you know, with uh, one or two of both, you know, the parents, uh, yeah. and really, uh, I see it, it makes a tremendous difference to be the oh, support. Oh, absolutely! To have this kind of support system is unbelievable. Have you uh, any? First of all, any NBA players that you would love to uh, emulate, as far as so I, I get asked that question a bunch. Um, you know, I I don't emulate anyone specifically. I kind of like to to look at a bunch of different players and learn from them and kind of pick from them, like um, you know, Kobe's footwork or the way JJ Reddick comes off the screen or the way Duncan Robinson catches it high and fires it high, you know, the way Clay Thompson moves without the ball or the way Patrick Beverly gets after it on defense, you know. So it, I, I try to you know take pick and choose things that I like when I'm when I'm watching, 
and say, hey, I, I, I like that. I'm going to try to put that in my game, even if it's watching college basketball, you know? So, um, yeah, just, I, I love that. I guess you make it, you know, you take from everybody, make it your own. Correct. Yeah. Correct. And uh, I did see a quote yesterday. Uh, someone, uh, I forgot who it was, but they were talking about uh, wanting to wake up super early and then they'd get to the breakfast room and see Kobe, uh, you know, with ice packs on his knees. And he yeah. had already, you know, sweating. He had already worked right. out, right? Yeah. So it's the hard work. Yeah, absolutely. Right? No, it's definitely the hard work. I love absolutely. that. And that's, and, that's, and that's the drive. But how do you balance, like, in other words, you have to have some fun too. What are things outside of basketball that you like to do? I actually like playing golf. Um, you know, me and my so my dad. It, it's about the only sport my dad can play at this point um, because he, he's a little bit older, so he's a little bit out of his prime, um, you know, physically. But so we, we we compete in golf and we have a good time uh, playing golf. Um, you know, Love but that. yeah, yeah. Um, but other than that, it's literally pretty much just basketball. Or coming home and watching NBA games. Or, or, or college games. I call it is over now, but, um, you know, NBA games going on. I used to think, I was like, oh, golf, golf's not really a sport. And yeah. then, and then recently, past six months, myself and my son, I have, I have 10 kids. My oldest is 16. Wow. And yeah. we've been, yeah, we've been, uh, uh, we've been going out on Sundays uh, <laughs> as beginners. Uh, right. And I'm like, I'm, I'm starting to develop the bug. I love it. You know, yeah. Once you get it, it's tough to, to get rid of it. I was fortunate enough my when I was 12 or 13, I didn't have a summer camp. I didn't have summer camp plans. Mm. And uh, my uncle was a part of this, uh, you know, country club. And so my mom would just drop me off every day and I would just be at a golf course for from like 10 till like five every day. And it, I just had a ball doing it, you know. And then after that, I'd have like AAU practice and whatnot. But I would just have a great time, you know, yeah. chipping and putting, and then playing the course a couple of times. Yeah, I love the I love the mind work, and I love that it's a lifelong, uh, lifelong journey. You can have an oh, amazing yeah. day, and then the next day you're like, eh. It'd be horrible. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, 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 it's the it's, greatest game in the world and the worst game in the world at the same time. You know? For sure, for sure. You but I, made it. I um. No, I was just thinking about, you know, kind of what you were saying, kind of, kind of your regimen, regimen daily, I guess three times a day, definitely taxing physically, mentally, emotionally. Uh, what is, like, what is the rehab? Is there, like, rehab? Shabbos, baby. Shabbat. <laughs> That's the rehab. Uh, my, my, my Sabbath is my rehab. Um, you know, we, 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 I take those days off and, um, you know, and, and just get ready to, to hit the week strong again after. I like that. I, I definitely can relate to that. Also, as a Sabbath observer, come I could be exhausted. Today's today actually recording today. Today is Friday, and uh, you know going in uh, definitely put in full week, uh, and then completely refresh. Come Saturday night. Okay, what's next? So right. I, I love that mentality. If you would have of the uh, of the thirty NBA teams, who would be uh, the team? that you would love to play for any of them. Um, honestly, any of them, I, I would just be excited to, to play in the NBA and, and you know, that so any team would, would, would be a, a blessing. Yeah. I want to, I want to, you know, try to push out, um, the sound advice you as a role model, what advice would you give to other, uh, well, not just in, um, not just in sports, but in dreams that kids have, uh, yeah. what advice would you give from a practical perspective to people that have these dreams that everybody says no, everybody says it's not possible, Yeah, you know, because you're trying to walk on a path that yeah. nobody has ever walked before. Right. So what advice from a practical perspective would you give uh, well, somebody Don't else? listen to, I mean, listen to doubters and prove them wrong. You know, I, you know how many people, there's been a lot of people, you know, throughout the years, um, you know, who, who said I wasn't going to be able to do this or that, um, use it as fuel and use that as motivation to try to prove them wrong. You know, uh, whether it was, Hey, you're not going to make varsity in ninth grade, or, 
hey, you're, you're not going to, you know, get a D1 offer or, hey, you may not start at Yeshiva or, hey, like, so it was little things along the way, um, you know, and, and, you know, just don't let anyone tell you, 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 you can't achieve that goal. Just, you may, you may start, you know, on, on, on the ground, but keep on building and keep on building, you know, uh, the NBA wasn't always my goal, um, you know, but I just kept getting better and kept, you know, putting the work in and, um, you know, and eventually NBA team started noticing. So uh, just doesn't matter where you're at. Just keep on putting in the work and you, you can achieve that. Yeah. You achieve your I, goals. I, I love that. The I'm here in Miami, huge Miami Heat fan, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> my kids love going to, going to games. I um, My first season tickets that I bought was, right, LeBron James. I'm going to South Beach, right? Love that. Yeah. And... Uh, and, and love the energy. So my hope, my fingers are crossed that you end up here in Miami. Every if you corner. are, you're always welcome by. I'm right around the corner, uh, right from the, from the awesome. arena. Shabbat meals. That's right. So it'd be, it'd be our guests. My, my, I have eight boys, two girls. Everyone plays basketball. We're loving oh, it. Yeah, there you go. Um, so maybe I, I put in a good word with Eric Spolstra. You know, oh, there you go. right? It. <laughs> it'll be it'll be great, but I know this is the tip of the iceberg of your journey. But if the listeners want to follow uh, your journey, how can they go ahead and do that? Follow me on on Ryan Terrell Eleven on IG um, or TikTok. Uh, but I, I usually don't. I'm not too big on social media. You know, I don't I don't go on it too much. Um, you know. Obviously, I've been trying to boost that because some social media is definitely good. Um, but yeah, you're sure. I'm it. sure you're getting your profile is continuing to grow, and yeah. we will hear very shortly that you did make the NBA. So, Rat Hashem. Yes, like we like to say. Yeah. You know? Well, I want to say Shabbat Shalom, Ryan. And, Shabbat Shalom. And I want to say thank you so much. It's really yeah, thank great. you for having me. This is great. It was awesome. Thanks for listening to the Common Denominator podcast. Join us next week for another inspiring, impactful, and empowering conversation. To learn more about Moshe, head to moshapopak.com. If you enjoyed this episode, feel free to share it. And we'd be grateful if you could rate, review, and subscribe to the show.